smoky. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, Wisconsin. Yeah, we're in Wisconsin right now. The half this lake is still iced up, so I gotta navigate around some icebergs here, but we're gonna make it work. We're gonna find some pre-spawn fish, water temps. What are water temps right now? 40 degrees, roughly. Uh, we were just in the shallow part, so I'm gonna guess main lake, they're gonna be in like the upper 30s. Uh, but goal number one today is catch crappie. I'm gonna show you what they're gonna look like on the side imaging. Uh, one of my favorite times of year to, to catch these fish. They're gonna set up basically in the same spots they were during the fall season, late October, November, basically when the water temps were in the mid to low 40s again. Today, I got some live minnows right there. Broke down and bought the uh, Frabble, the uh, Frayville Magnum bait station. I'm gonna be using that. I'm headed to Tennessee here in a, in a week, uh, a week or two. So they wouldn't be needing that. But today we're gonna use some live minnows, slip bobber tactics, get on top of some, some of these crappie that are gonna be set up on the hard soft bottom transition. It's where they were basically last November. Um, possibly on some deeper brush piles, possibly. Um, but I got a feeling we're just gonna be side imaging a bunch of uh, hard to soft bottom transition areas near some spawning flats. And uh, that's where we're gonna find these fish. But we're gonna have to punch through some ice here. I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah. That's a sheet of ice. This morning I checked the lake and this was actually all open, but there's been some south winds. So now we've got a, luckily the ice isn't solid. It's all kind of broken up. It's just moving around. We're gonna have to punch through it. All right, well, this one has some ton of fish on it actually. Let's see if we can go back here, zoom in a bit. This one's actually loaded. You can see them stacked up vertically on top. There's some one on this one too. So, uh, wasn't actually planning on fishing brush piles, but since the fish are there, might as well fish for them, right? So I'm gonna throw the trolling motor down and we'll uh, get that slip bobber set up going. All right, here we go. Super, this is my go-to setup. Go-to setup for slip bobber rigs. Eight foot ACC, 1,000 size to 2,000 size, depending on what I'm doing. We're deep enough right now, we're in 25 feet of water. So these fish are, are not gonna get too scared of the boat. So I'm not gonna be really casting too much. If I'm casting a lot, I'm gonna go to a 2,000 size reel. Uh, this is eight pound mono. Got the rod and bobs. This is a three quarter ounce rod and bobs, bobber size. I gotta start mentioning which sizes I use because you guys start asking those questions. There are fish right below the boat. And uh, we're going with a, this is a one eighth ounce split shot and a number one zone lock Aberdeen hook. I'll link everything below. Today we're using, let's see if we can get this thing out. We're doing the old uh, yarn stop. You can use uh, braid line too if you need it, but I'm gonna try with the old yarn stop. The, uh, the rubber bobber stops tend to get caught in the 1000 size reel. So if you're using a rubber bobber stop, you definitely want to use a 2,000 size reel. It's going to help cast out easier. And oh my goodness, this thing is a breeze. Except when you drop the minnow. Now, we're going to try hooking them through the back because crappie like to eat the minnow head first. And I don't know how aggressive these fish are going to be. 40 degree water temp, 39 degree water temp. I don't know. They could be aggressive. You know, these are northern crappies, so they're used to this cold water. So we'll figure out, uh, it, if they start hitting it really hard, I'm going to hook it through the head. That way I don't lose as many. Um, yeah, this is, oh man, you know, right, be right below the boat. Hold on, let me, let me just show you on the cam here. Ooh, that brush pile right there. That thing is loaded with bait fish bait fish and there's some crappie stacked up in it that is it's like right right here below the boat so we're gonna drop this thing down there and catch some crappie on some live minnows feels good i fished this lake a couple times this winter but i didn't chase after crappie there's some decent bluegill in this lake and the ice fishing bite can be can be really good for bluegill
Oh, dang it. Here he is. There he is. Oh, I didn't set my drag. Forgot to set my drag. It's a decent one to start. It's a nice eater. I'm not keeping any just yet, though. I'm going to keep my minnow. Nice, uh, probably about a nine and a half inch fish right there to start. See you, buddy. Here we go. Got him. It's a dark male right there. It's a little guy though. Eight incher maybe. I'll show you what I did though. I haven't been getting a bite for about three or four minutes here. I raised my split shot above the hook about, I don't know, five, six inches maybe. And that allows that minnow to kind of swim around. And these more aggressive crappie will want to chase those minnows. When you pin the, the weight to the top of the hook, that's for more of a negative bite when these fish really don't want to chase these minnows around. But uh, I'm going to get a fresh minnow too. Um, when you raise that, that weight above the hook, it allows that minnow to swim around. These more aggressive crappie are going to want to chase it, and that triggers that bite. So, just that little adjustment, and I mean, I, I just did that. It took me like, I don't know, 30 seconds to catch that fish after I adjusted that, so. Let's get back down there, catch another one. There he is, got him that time. A little bit deeper this time. That guy was in about, he was about 21 feet down. The two I caught earlier today were only about 15 to 16 feet down. Nice crappie though. Another decent eater. Let's see, buddy. Put a new minnow on here and Trying to find the best way to get a bunch of them to bite quickly, but I don't know if the bite's going to be that great with the water temps in the 30, you know, the upper 30s. I think it's going to be a grind out of an afternoon the way it's looking. That's okay. That's why I like using a, a slip bobber setup on days like this. You can just spend a bait right in the, the crappie's face. You, can't, you don't have to get too close. Uh, this is a pretty clear lake, you know, 10 to 12 feet visibility. Pretty darn clear, clear water, so I don't really want to stack right up on top of them with a vertical jig setup, but I might be able to switch to that later on if the bite picks up. There he is. That guy smacked it. Oh, he spit up the minnow. Seems like the more aggressive fish are staging up off these brush piles. I tried dropping, dropping on top of the brush pile here, or the crib, but the aggressive ones are off on the edges in between. So I had to lower my, uh, or raise my uh, slip stop a little bit because those fish are a little bit deeper than the ones above the tops of these cribs. There he is. Oh, that bite is starting to turn on. All right. Another healthy eater. See you, buddy. There he is. Some of these are slow bites. Where they just grab the minnow and just slowly sink back down, and some of them they just smack it, try to run away with it. Oh, lost a minnow. That's a little guy. See, you, bud. There's a few different schools down there, and there's one school where I dropped it down twice, and it was like smack, smack. Got two fish right off the bat, and went to put a minnow on. And I kind of drifted off them. Now I don't remember which school it was.
There's one. He's just kind of holding on to it. Wanted to pick up and kind of move that minnow around and that guy was just holding right onto it. That bite hasn't been fantastic today, but. All right, well, unfortunately, we're not gonna catch one to end the video. Uh, let's make this a two-parter. Let's come back out tomorrow morning when it's not raining and uh, we'll catch some more fish and we can fry them up for lunch. Let's do that. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to part two of this video. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it's cold. It's a uh, temp drop last night into the 20s. Luckily, we have a pretty strong wind out of the north. Chewed up the entire lake in terms of ice, so the ice is gone, which is good because we can run across the entire lake. And uh, we're gonna go back to the same spot that we were catching them yesterday afternoon before that rain and wind kind of pushed us off. And we'll see how the bite is. All right, as much as I want to fish with this slip bobber, uh, this is not the greatest, this is not the best technique for this type of, this type of wind and the way that they're biting. But I am gonna show you how to tie that rig on in a second. I'm gonna go to my double jig setup. Got these guys. As much as I do love my, my slip bobber tactics, and I know you guys love those videos too. It's just, with the wind, it's, it's not, you can't fish them like this. There he is. Got him that time. That might be a top jig. Bottom jig. Healthy crappie, though. Yeah, unfortunately, this wind is not going to allow me to have a... Oh, we choked that. Not going to let me have a, that bobber set up working for me too well. So I tied on the double jig setup. All right, see you, buddy. Oh, shoot, I was going to keep you. Well, today uh, it didn't work out the way I wanted to. Um, I really wanted to get this kind of part two of the slip bobber video uh, finished up for you. Unfortunately, the conditions just weren't conducive to slip bobber fishing. Uh, we had about a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind out of the north. It's just going to get stronger. We got a cold front coming through. Um, I woke up this morning, it was in the 20s. Right now it's probably, I don't know, 34, 35 degrees outside. Water temps, we're in the shallows. Water temps in the shallows are 39, but out in the main lake they were like 37, 38. So I think I did this, I talked about this when I was in Missouri last time. These are the slip style knots, the yarn knots. They work great for ice fishing, and if you're just going to drop the bobber right next to your boat, they're not bad. Um, I was having to cast the bobber today because of the wind, and so I probably should have had these rubber bobber stops today. Um, the one thing I will say about this, if you're going to use these, you should upgrade to a 2,000 size reel. Uh, this is a 1,000 size. You know, it's okay if you're just pitching out away from the boat, but if you're really casting a slip bobber, you want to use a 2,000 size reel. This is the Honor XT by PC Fun. But, so I, since I was casting today, we're going to tie this style of rig on. All right, so there you go. You uh, put the line through that little wire loop, and then you just slowly pull uh, that rubber bead off until it pops over like that. You can slide that rubber bead up the line a little bit. And then for your hook, I use the I tend to use these, the number one size. These are the uh, Aberdeen hooks by Zone Lock. They got a little bend right by the barb there. That helps keep your minnows on and it helps hold the fish on the hook without tearing their lip up. Keeps them away from the barb. For live minnows, I like to use a snell knot. Take your line, you're going to put it through the eyelet of the hook away from the point of the hook. Okay, see how it's going away from the point of the hook? Like that. You're going to pull out about five, six inches. You're going to pinch your line against the bottom of the hook 
right before the bend, right there. Then you're gonna take your tag end and you're gonna wrap it around both the line and the shaft of the hook about five or six times. Like that, and then you're gonna pinch that wrapped line together with your other hand. Now notice you got a loop on this side. You're gonna take your tag end and you're gonna put it right through that loop just like that. Now you're going to slowly pull it tight, both ends tight, and you want to get these wraps below the eyelet of the hook. Keep those below the eyelet of the hook. So what you want to do is you want to pull your tag end tight first, and then the main line going up to the rod tip. Pull that tight. See how they bunched up below the eyelet? And then you can slowly pull both of them tight and slide them up if you need to. Just like that. And then you go ahead and clip off your tag end with clippers or scissors. There you go. And it's okay if you have a little bit of tag end, it's not a big deal. That right there is your snell knot. And the importance of the snell knot, if you notice, the line's coming out this way. So when you set the hook, it actually uses that eyelet as leverage, puts that hook tip into the fish's mouth. So that's why I really like using snell knots, especially if you're casting uh, far away from your boat. When you hook, set the hook, uses that eyelet as leverage, puts that hook in the fish's mouth. Now the weight setup, I'm using, this is a uh, 1 8 I believe. 1 8 split shot. You can use whatever you think is necessary for your bobber. There's, I guess there's two different ideas of where you should put your weight. On a negative bite where I think Today would probably be a really negative bite. You got cold water temps, uh, you got a cold front coming through, they're not gonna bite very well. I'm probably gonna put my weight just above my hook, like this. I'm probably gonna pin it to the top of my hook and make it kinda look like a jig head, okay? Now, yesterday the bite was kinda semi-aggressive, so you can have that, that you know, you can have that minnow kind of swimming around a little bit, so you can raise the height of your weight, let's say four or five inches above your hook, kind of like this, okay? And the reason for that is it allows that minnow to kind of swim around, and those crappie will chase it. Now, if they're, they really want to chase a minnow, you can raise that weight to a foot above your Aberdeen hook or your minnow, and that allows that minnow to swim around a little more, triggering that more aggressive bite. Um, the negative bite and the reason you put it right above the eyelid of the hook is because when they grab the minnow, they're going to raise up the water column with it. It's a negative bite. Um, and a lot of times when that, when that happens, or what should happen is as they raise that, that minnow and that weight at the same time, your bobber's going to go sideways. Okay, That's how you know you got a negative bite. Today's conditions were not conducive to using a bobber because the waves were foot to foot and a half would be my guess and when the bobber's constantly doing this it's really hard to see a negative bite um, you can see the positive bite where it's super aggressive because the bobber's just going to go down or if it's in a wave as it comes up over a wave if it stays in the middle of the wave like if the wave comes up and it stays through the middle of the wave that's how you know you got a fish just holding on to that that minnow um, but today's bite was more of a negative bite it's really hard to use a bobber setup Yesterday's was pretty good because it's pretty much flat, calm water. There wasn't too much wind until the end of the day and when it pushed me off the, off the lake. Um, but for the most part, it was fine. This is a three-quarter ounce Rod and Bob's bobber. And uh, this is pretty much typically what I use for my live minnow setups. Uh, my jigs, I might go to a one inch depending on my jig size that I'm going to use. But this is uh, the typical setup that I use for slip bobber. Now, if you notice, I've said this in numerous other videos. The reason I use this is it's got two slots. Let's see if I can get that in focus there. Two slots. Now the, the top slot right here, that is for a fixed bobber position. Coming up in the next month, when these fish move shallow towards the end of April, beginning of May, um, that's when our fish start spawning up here in Wisconsin and Minnesota. I'm gonna be using that first notch because I'm only gonna be fishing in three to five feet of water. That second notch, you can see right there, that second notch, that is a slip bobber notch that allows it to slide up and down the line. When you clip it in, it slides up and down the line just like that. And uh, 
I really like this specifically. I did a video down in Missouri. Um, when you get ice, when it's cold temps like this, you can get ice on your line. So being able to easily remove that bobber and fight the fish without having to fight any ice on your line is a, is a big, big plus, especially if you're ice fishing. Um, it does have a hollowed out grommet in the middle. So if you want to run it like a regular slip bobber, you can do that. Um, I, I'm gonna be honest with you, I, I really just like using that little notch by the spring. It's so easy to take off. If, if something gets tangled, you can just pop this right off and deal with the tangled mess. So appreciate you watching. I hope you learned a little bit. I know it wasn't the greatest video today. It just, sometimes the conditions aren't, aren't really right to what, what you want to film. But slip bobber fishing is going to be something that I'm going to use a lot uh, coming into the pre-spawn, uh, later into the pre-spawn as these fish start moving a little bit shallower. The weed edges are going to start growing up a little bit. Um, it's a great tactic. Live minnows, crappie. Get those golden crispy fillets. So appreciate you watching as always. If you got any comments or questions about the setup, 1,000 size reel if you're just fishing right next to the boat. 2,000 size if you're casting away from the boat. This is my go-to crappie rod for slip bobber fishing. It's the eight foot ACC, eight pound monofilament. Works great. Um, I would highly recommend monofilament if you're using a slip bobber setup. The, uh, the rod and bobs are awesome. Zone lock hooks. I'll link the entire setup below, but if you got any comments or questions, you can post them in the comment section below as always, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I appreciate hearing from you. Hope you're having a great fishing season so far.